Welcome to another lesson. Today's lesson is on inflation. Uh, ultimately, inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon. That is what the late great economist Milton Friedman used to say. And so the key to reducing today's inflation is going to be the Federal Reserve raising short-term interest rates like it did today, May 4th, as well as pursuing an aggressive course of quantitative tightening. Consumer prices rose 6.6% in March from a year ago. March's increase was the fastest since January of 1982. If you exclude energy and food, the increase in core prices was 5.2% compared to the prior four months when core prices were rising by an average of 0.5% per month. The monthly increase of 0.3% from February and March indicates that price pressures may be starting to ease. The U.S. economy is measured by gross domestic product. Well, that shrank in the first quarter of this year, January through March, at a 1.4% annual rate, well below the forecast for 1.5% growth and 6.9% rate recorded in the last quarter of 2021. There were several pockets of strength in the first quarter, including investments into overall personal consumption expenditures, expenditures on durable goods, investments into intellectual property, and residential investments. All were positive. Inventories grew for the second quarter in a row. That, to me, is a sign that the worst of the supply chain crisis may be behind us. Segments of the economy that struggled included personal consumption, expenditures on non-durable goods, export goods, and government spending also showed weakness. Like most things today, inflation is a political lightning rod. As a result, there's a great deal of misconception around it. Inflation is measured by the consumer price index is up about 8% from a year ago, a level not seen since 1981. Politicians and media outlets who are not economists blame all kinds of things. They also uh, at first called it transitory. Uh, then they bl blamed it on COVID, then greedy corporations. And lately it's been the Russian war or the Putin price hike. But there is a simple economic explanation for inflation. Going back to Milton Friedman, he was a Nobel Prize winning economist. He famously said, inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon in the sense that it is and can be produced only by a more rapid increase in the quantity of money than in output. Monetarism is a macroeconomic theory named for its focus on money's role in the economy. This differs significantly from Keynesian economics. Keynesians emphasize the role of government and how government plays in the economy through expenditures. To monetarists like Friedman, the best thing to do is to leave the economy alone and only keep an eye on the money supply. The market will take care of itself. The market will find a balance for everything. In the end, the theory goes, markets are more efficient at dealing with inflation and unemployment, certainly more efficient than the government is. In his book, a Monetary History of the United States, 1867 to 1960, Milton Friedman argued that the poor monetary policy of the Federal Reserve was the primary cause of the Great Depression in the United States. He argued that markets naturally moved towards a stable center and an incorrectly set money supply caused the market to behave erratically. Today, the M2 measure of money supply is up more than 40% since the start of COVID. Core prices, which exclude the normally volatile food and energy sectors, are up on their own 6.4% over a year. The government measures inflation in various ways and none of them are perfect. It's clear that our central bank, the Federal Reserve, is going to have a hard time wrestling inflation back down unless it takes the monetarist approach that Paul Volcker did in 1981. Paul Volcker was appointed the chairman of the Fed back in August of 1979, in large part because of his anti-inflation views. He felt strongly that mounting inflation should be the primary concern for the Fed. In terms of economic stability, he said, in the future, inflation is what is likely to give us the most problems and create the biggest recessions. 
Much like today, he believed that the Fed faced a credibility problem when it came to keeping inflation in check. During the previous decade, the 1970s, the Federal Reserve had demonstrated that it did not place much emphasis on maintaining low inflation and public expectation of such continued behavior would make it increasingly difficult for the Federal Reserve to bring inflation down. So in late 1980 and early 1981, Volcker and the Federal Reserve tightened the money supply and the federal funds rate reached nearly 20%. As a comparison today and for the last several years, it's been near zero. By October 1982, inflation had fallen to 5% and long-run interest rates began to decline. The commitment of Volcker and his successors to aggressively target price stability helped ensure that the double-digit inflation of the 1970s would not return. Join me next time for another lesson and thank you for your time. (laughs) 